Hola everyone and welcome back to the Planet D. Today we're taking you to the beautiful beach town of Marbella, Spain. Located in the southern tip of Spain in Costa del Sol, we spent 48 hours in Marbella and we're going to share all of the best things to do with you today. Marbella is located in the southern part of Spain in the region of Andalusia. Known as the shining star of Costa del Sol, it has a beautiful coastline along the Mediterranean Sea with long sandy beaches, beach bars and a beautiful old town. To get to Marbella, we flew into the Malaga airport. Marbella is an hour drive from Malaga and we hired a private driver from Get Your Guide. You can also take the bus from the airport or you can rent a car. We found it very easy to drive around the Costa del Sol area. And once you get to Marbella, there are a ton of things just waiting to be discovered. Getting around Marbella is very easy. If you're staying near the old town, you can simply walk to the beaches and to all of the main attractions. There are Ubers and lifts available and taxis are easy to hail and it's very affordable. So are you ready to see all the best things to do in Marbella, Spain? Let's go. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click on that bell so that you get notifications right into your inbox because we put up new travel videos each and every week. When you're in Marbella, make your way into the Old Town. Marbella Old Town is a beautiful place in the city to stroll through. Admire those whitewashed buildings lining the charming cobblestone streets. It really feels like you've stepped back in time. This is the place to go search for a cocktail, sit on a terrace, and just spend your time people watching. Marbella is all about relaxing and enjoying the finer things in life. The Old Town of Marbella dates back to the 15th century, and it's a great destination to really take in all that Andalusian atmosphere. What I really loved about it was all of the flowers that were adorning the streets and hanging on the sides of the white buildings. It was just absolutely beautiful. And going to a rooftop patio oh, yeah. to overlook the entire city, what a great thing to do at night. And like there's tons of boutique clothing stores, uh, those historic buildings, there's lots to keep you occupied while you're there. Yeah, and if you want to get yourself a flamenco dress, this is the place to do it. There are all kinds of boutique shops selling those Andalusian dresses. The main square of the Old Town is Plaza de los Noreñas. Now that is oranges, of course, and it's named after all of the orange trees that are in the square. They provide shade for all of the terraces that surround the entire square, and this really is the heartbeat of Marbella. If you want to find a place to eat, this is the place to find it because there are restaurants everywhere. It's located in the center of the old town, and it really has that great feel like we talked about uh, with all those white Andalusian style buildings. And there's a big renaissance fountain right in the center of it, so make sure you take a walk to take a look at it. We continued our tour through Old Town by checking out the Church of the Lady of Incarnation, which is located just off the Plaza de los Narayanos. The church dates back to the 17th century. Built on a former mosque, the Iglesia de la Encarnación is a mix of Renaissance and Baroque architecture that is really, really interesting. Great pronunciation, Dave. Well, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> That's rubbing off on me being here in Spain. <laughs> the church has also kept some of its Muslim elements, such as the church's tower, which was originally a minaret of the mosque. It's a working church, and when we visited, there was a mass going on, so we were unable to go inside, unfortunately. But it was still beautiful to see from the outside. Sure was. One of the most popular attractions in Marbella is the Marbella Castle and Walls. The old town is surrounded by the old walls, so make sure you step out of town to take a look at them. This castle dates back to the 9th century, and at one time there were 10 towers. There are two that you can explore today, but you can't go inside. You can only walk around the outside. However, this is very important to see because it's one of the most important remnants of Arabic architecture in all of Marbella. Yeah, and the best place to actually see the best preserved parts are on the south and the east walls. So you want to head over there to check them out. The Avenida del Mar was one of our favorite places to take a stroll. It's a lovely pedestrian street that connects Marbella Old Town to the beach. What makes it so unique is that there's a line of statues that are made by Salvador Dali. But it's not only Dali statues that line Avenida del Mar. There are lots of artists featured there as well. What's really interesting is Dali never lived in Marbella, but I'm assuming that he loved it just as much as us and he wanted to make his mark and leave a little something to tell the city thank you for his beautiful stays. Yeah, I think he used a holiday there, so that's, uh, you know, it, it's fitting. 
I know that if I lived in Spain, I would holiday there regularly. If you want a quiet escape from the crowds, make your way to Alameda Park. This is a beautiful little reprieve from not only the crowds, but the heat. It's covered in trees and there are little park benches that are lining this cobblestone streets there. What's really beautiful is that they're intricate ceramic park benches that are just a work of art, just like so many things in Marbella. And while you're there, don't forget to check out the fountain as well. That's sort of the centerpiece of the park and something that's not to be missed. And there's a little children's playground and of course, a beautiful little carousel. <laughs> One of our favorite things to do in Marbella was to walk the Paseo Maritimo each morning. We just loved it. We would get ourselves a coffee and walk along the path that spans for seven kilometers. We went right from the old town all the way out to where were we going to? We're going to a Porto Banus. You walk in front of all of the luxury hotels. There's little play stations where you can work out. And of course, there's plenty of cafes and restaurants lining the little promenade. The perfect way to kick off the morning. This is also a great place for sunset and to have some dinner at night. With over 15 high class golf courses, Marbella is definitely a golfer's paradise. We couldn't believe the amount of people we saw lugging around their golf clubs in the airport. That was a perfect signal to say, hey, this is the place if you love to golf. Marbella's Puerto Banus is famous for its luxury yachts, fast cars, and luxurious hotels. But it's also the premier place in Marbella for nightlife. So why not join the lifestyles of the rich and famous like we did and jump on a sunset cruise down the Costa del Sol. We hopped on a charter yacht with smart yachting to set sail from Marbella Marina in Porto Banos, where we went for the ultimate sunset sail all the way down the coast. It was amazing. Porto Banos really is the place to be seen. There were people driving their luxury cars up and down the street. Our 50 foot yacht was one of the small ones. There were giant yachts there and we just felt like we were billionaires for the evening. Now you can't come to Marbella and not visit at least one, possibly more of its beaches. It, this is what it is known for. It has 27 kilometers of coastline with some incredible beach life. Many of the resorts have their own beach right in front. So maybe you'll want to stay at one of the luxury resorts and just bask on the beach for the entire day you're there. There's plenty of water sports, there's kayaking, there's beachside diming, or you can just simply relax on its golden sands. And Marbella has seven blue flag beaches. And if you don't know what those are, those are awarded to beaches with superb quality waters that are dedicated to environmental management and have services and amenities. So you can see why Marbella is the ideal place for a beach vacation. One thing you must do when you're in the Andalusia region is to see the Andalusian horses perform their choreographed performances. Yeah, we were lucky enough to go and see that and they did flamenco dancing. It was a whole show. These horses are just absolutely beautiful and something you don't want to miss when you're in this region. It's and of course you are in the land of flamenco. So if you have a chance, make sure to see a flamenco show and immerse in the Andalusian culture because that's the joy of going to Andalusia and Marbella. If you happen to be visiting Marbella in June, join the Marbella Feria. It is a week long festival that celebrates with flamenco dancing, music, and the patron saint of Marbella. This is a festive time to be in town. If you wanna get out of town, we highly recommend spending at least a day, possibly two in Gibraltar. It's only an hour's drive from Marbella and we rented a car and drove down to the Southern tip of Spain, right where we could see Morocco and popped into a little bit of the United Kingdom to visit Gibraltar. Gibraltar is located just south of Spain's Costa del Sol on the Iberian Peninsula, close to the southwestern tip of Europe. Mm -hmm. It is separated from Spain by a small one mile strip of land that's been turned into an airport runway. And you actually have to cross that to get from Spain into Gibraltar. We stayed on the Spanish side of the border and just walked to Gibraltar. It was only 30 minutes for us to get to the funicular and we went up to the top of the rock to see panoramic views of Costa del Sol and of Morocco. And if you stay on the Spanish side, it's actually way cheaper than staying on the Gibraltar side because you're paying in euros instead of pounds and it's just a, a much better place to base yourself. Once you get to the top of the rock, there are so many things to do. There is an amazing last floor that you can walk out over and a lot of people are afraid but it gives you some incredible views of the coast you can actually like i said see morocco and you want to make sure that you keep an eye out for the gibraltar apes 
They are the only monkeys that are on all of mainland Europe. They're actually macaws that came from Morocco, but it's pretty cool because they have a whole colony that lives there. And don't forget, you can't miss St. Michael's Cave. That really blew us away. Walking into this cave, we're, you know, we thought, okay, well, this will be pretty cool, but they have a light show there and it really focuses on different formations that look like St. Michael. It's really incredible. Yeah, it looked like his giant wings, angel wings yeah. had come up from the heavens and said, or come down from the heavens and said, hello, Dave and Deb. How are you today? <laughs> I was really impressed with that. <laughs> it was beautiful. Another day trip from Marbella that you should go to is Ronda. This is a city just an hour outside of Marbella into the interior and it's a great way to get immersed in a little bit of history and get away from the beaches. And it's actually the Puente Nuevo or New Bridge that's the most impressive site. This 18th century bridge spans the El Tajo Gorge which is a spectacular sight unto itself. It's also known for having the oldest bullring in all of Spain, if you're into that sort of thing. Woo! That was a lot. Especially in 48 hours. Yeah, definitely. Now, if you enjoyed this video, again, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click that bell so you get notifications whenever we put up a new travel video, which we do weekly. See you next time. Bye.